Hi guys, welcome to Q&A Monday. So it's the second video in this series. I'm going to be answering your questions every Monday. So if you have a question, make sure to post it in the comments on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash spinach and yoga. So today we have a few questions. Um, Kristen was asking, how did you overcome polycystic ovarian syndrome? Uh, were you taking anything? Um, I hear it's extremely hard to conceive any recommendations that would help. So Kirsten, I would say the first thing is to read Cla uh, Claudia Welsh's book, Balance Your Hormones, Balance Your Life. This book was really, really helpful for me. She describes um, methods that are both from Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. And uh, she's been working with women for such a long time that the recommendations that she provides are based both in theory and in practice. So definitely get the book. I'm going to post the link right below the video. Another thing that I found that personally helped me was visualization and using deep, relaxing breaths to just calm down your nervous system. And Dr. Claudia describes really well why our stress hormones are connected to reproductive hormones. Uh, so alternative nostril breathing is extremely helpful and you can find a local yoga instructor to show you how to do it. Um, and also visualizing your body in a healthy state and having regular healthy periods have been extremely, extremely helpful for me. Um, Tisha is asking, do I take probiotics? If yes, what brands, enzymes or other supplements? Um, Currently, I do not take probiotics, uh, but I have been taking them for a while. And uh, the ones that I was taking is by Claire Labs. It's C-L-A-I-R-E Labs. And you can get them on Amazon or at a local store. Um, Dr. Ahira ones are also be being recommended quite a bit. What I do now is I eat um, fermented vegetables with most of my meals. So basically lunch and dinner, I have about a tablespoon of fermented either greens or fermented carrots and ginger or fermented cabbage. Um, also when at home, I sometimes um, make coconut yogurt, coconut kefir, basically getting coconut water and just um, put a probiotic capsule in there and you have um, coconut kefir. You can also buy it in Whole Foods and basically all you need is just a couple of tablespoons. Um, so I like supplements that come mostly in terms of food. Um, also Tisha was asking, coffee, good or bad for you? So below the video there will be a link to my article about whether coffee is a poison or a medicine. And again, I think there's no food that can be defined as completely good or completely bad. Anything can be used as a medicine and some things will be poison for certain people. So when it comes to coffee, if you choose the best quality coffee that you can find that is not too acidic and you basically have it not first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, but um, maybe after some food, it's not going to be as irritating to your stomach. Also a good way in Ayurveda, everything is described in qualities. So coffee can be very heating, um, very drying. So to balance it out, you can add some coconut oil or some ghee in it and some cardamom and definitely um, maybe some almond milk. Uh, I personally do not drink coffee, uh, even though I have been for while I was studying in university. Now I prefer to have um, fennel tea, sometimes green tea, and I find that my body is not craving it, but it's a personal choice for anyone. So if you choose to drink coffee, make sure that um, you're balancing it out with good fats and a little bit of spices like cardamom. Um, another question was from Lakshmi. I have a migraine for 10 years. Um, are there any Ayurvedic medicine that would help? Um, it's really impossible to give a recommendation because I don't know what's happening in your body and what can be causing it. Um, but I would definitely try to build a dialogue with yourself and ask your body every single morning, how can I support you in a way that those migraines are not going to happen? 
because the migraine is a symptom of a certain imbalance. So getting to know your body better, whether you work with a practitioner or whether you try to figure it out on your own, um, is something that it usually is very helpful and make sure that you're drinking lots of water and that you're resting enough and that you really take time to reduce stress. So whenever your body is having such strong symptoms, um, your body needs lots of rest time and your nervous system needs to be calm for that healing to start happening in the body. So prioritize letting your nervous system get some good quality rest. Um, there was also another question um, in terms of a burning sensation in the stomach or diarrhea. Again, it's really hard to give a general recommendation without knowing your personal case. Um, but in general, if a burning sensation is coming from foods that are spicy or really sour um, or maybe really hot, I would try to reduce them in your diet and focus for a while on foods that are more bland, very gentle, maybe soupy-like, um, and try to take out lots of rough, acidic, spicy things. Kind of let your stomach heal before irritating the lining again. Um, and in terms of diarrhea, it, again, really depends on what causes the diarrhea. So first thing, figure out what causes it and take that food out. Um, if it's stress related, then try to help your body manage stress in a better way. And um, again, that's only the initial steps, which can be helpful, um, but really hard to give um, a personalized answer knowing just a general situation. And my short little message to you for this week is, um, I just got off the phone speaking with Aloha, which is a great company who created two new supplements. And what we were talking on is a way to nourish your body and what nourishment really is. And what I found is that a lot of people associate nourishment purely with food. But in reality, it's more about finding other things besides food that can be nourishing to you. And it's very, very personal. For somebody taking a walk is nourishing. For somebody putting oil on their feet is nourishing. For somebody a slow cup of tea is nourishing. So figure out what it is besides food. So the food is not becoming one center, one thing that has to fulfill all your needs for nourishment. Because otherwise what happens is we end up overeating because we're trying to fill all our needs with food. So find other sources for pleasure, for nourishment, for beauty that you can use every single day consistently to fill your needs um, and commit to doing them because you do eat every single day. So you need other sources of nourishment every single day as well. Um, so below in the comments, if you have something that you think is very nourishing to you, please share them and I'm sure it's going to be helpful to other people. And I'll see you on the website spinachinyoga.com or on my Facebook page. Bye.